All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Coffee Break. Today, we have a special guest with us, a good friend of mine, but also a sister. This is family right here. Um, and I believe and I know that you are going to be blessed by her story. Um, this has been um, some a long time coming. We, we've been wanting to get a coffee break done for some time. So I'm glad she was able to um, uh, make some time and, and you know, she has kids and you know life just hits us. But we're here and we have her today. So Cheyenne, Yo. <laughs> God bless you, man. God bless you. Let me get my coffee too. Yeah. How's everything going? It's going great, bro. Yeah. Yeah. How's how's life? It's it's been a it's been a minute, but how's how's life going? Life is great, you know. There's so many things we can always complain about, you know, so many things we could be like, ah, oh, but this, but this, you know, but I've been finding in this new season that the joy of the Lord is really my strength, you know, and being content right. with God is enough. You know what I'm saying? Because yes, I think too, like, it's great. You know, we want to strive for things. You know, we want our businesses to flourish. We want all these things, but is God is enough. If he did nothing else, yeah. if him sending Jesus on the cross, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is that enough? And so I think in this season, just learning to rest, abide, and trust him, um, you know, and just being like, God, you're enough. In and out of season, you know, you're enough. No matter what you're doing, Amen. you're enough. Amen to yeah. that. And that's, that's good that, that that mindset is what's going to sustain us and keep us going forward, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I've met, so, you know, um, if anyone already knows, right, this is Joseph SD's wife. Joseph SD is a great friend of mine. Um, and when I met you, like I see, you know, from going based on our relationship, right? Like I've seen you grow also, not only has his, from his girlfriend to his wife, whatever, even though we didn't get to interact while you were much of his girlfriend, because it was a short period of time. But I, I've seen your energy, I've seen your excitement, I've seen like certain things that also you, how you were as Cheyenne, right? Um, and I know you were also transitioning, right? Um, from, you know, an old Cheyenne to a new Cheyenne, right? The Bible says that when, when you know, when we accept Christ in our lives, we become a new creation, right? All this good stuff that comes as a package. So um, when you were in that transition, right? Now from a girlfriend to, you know, a, a, a wife, but also in transition with the Lord, which was your, which was your most important like transition, um, how was that like coming from maybe let's say where you were coming from? I know a little bit about your story, just very tad bit, but how was it before to then getting to the place where you find Christ and then like so many other things like happened to you after that? Yeah, it's crazy because, you know, we did a live last night and we were talking about that transition, you know, and, um, you know, you met me maybe two years after I fully surrendered mm. to Christ and decided like, I'm not going to be with the nonsense no more. Right. You know, I'm, I'm going to give you my life, God, and I'm going to walk this, you know, narrow road, you know, and something that I don't think is spoken about enough, which I'm learning even more in this season is that I was unhealed. There was a lot of uh, healing and deliverance and you know not to get too deep but you know my husband was saying last night you know there's there's all these things on deliverance but deliverance is really to be set free you know to no longer be in bondage to no longer have your soul you know I feel like just crushed and saddened and uh you know uh, uh this our soul remembers the things, this is scripture, it speaks about in Proverbs, yeah. our soul remembers mm. things that our mind right. cannot remember. Mm. So when we go through trauma, when we go through things in our life that maybe we can't even understand, especially as a child, right? We, ha we hide those things and they're deep inside of our soul. And so, oh, so 
I didn't realize that my soul needed healing. And um, I would say within the past three years, the Lord has really shown me what it looks like to heal my soul. He has, I've prayed these prayers. And when you start praying these prayers, you know that you really, you're like, okay, God, I'm gonna pray this. But maybe you fully don't understand the depths of your prayer. But I began to pray that the Lord would excavate the things that are deep hidden in my soul because I knew that there was a lot of things in my life that I didn't know. I didn't understand. There was a lot of things that, from being a child um, in my generation, in my bloodline, that I didn't understand. Things that were never talked about. Mm. And um, I knew that certain things were tied to me not fully being healed. My soul, I, I would go into prayer and you know, when we don't know how to pray, the spirit knows how to intercede on our behalf. Right. And sometimes there would just be this weeping, you know, before the Lord. And, and you know, you know the difference when there's a weep where it's just joyful, yep. you know, and you're just so grateful. But then there's this weeping that it almost feels sad, you right. know. And so the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit began to show me and I would dream. I would have dreams, you know, and. A lot of times we don't understand dreams, you know, uh, you know, in the scripture, if you study scriptures in the Bible, you know, you're, it's like three calf, 20 cows, you know, but you have to go into the presence of the Lord, you know, or seek counsel to be like, what does this mean? And so the Lord will show me there's some deliverance, there's some healing, there's some things that are still undealt with. And I think to go back to your question is uh, that transition period, I went from being a broken little girl, right? Uh, an independent little girl in survival mode. Like I, I was doing life to survive because that's all I knew. You know, I, I hustled. Let me let me figure out how I can get in my next dollar. You know, let me help figure out how I can make money. You know, I grew up in a life. Uh, my mother, she was a heroin addict. From the age of like 12, 13, she got into drugs. We grew up in a, fa a single family home, just my mom. My mom and my dad were separated at a young age. And so, you know, you there's something that switches, I feel like. I knew that, I, I was like, I could never be on drugs. I, I, I could never be like that. But I feel like you don't realize that you still become a creature of your habit. You know what I'm saying? A creature, right? You cre yeah. That's the way you say it? Yeah. Like you still adapt to a, a lifestyle. Right. You know, you, you're saying you want, I don't want to be nothing like this, but then in turn you become everything like that. Yeah. And you, now, you, now you combine, you're a wife, right? And now you're in Christ. And now, you, now you're learning how to be a woman, like figuring out who you are, figuring out your identity. Because I didn't know none of that, right? What is, what is it like to be even a woman? Nobody taught me that, you know? I was grateful enough to have, you know, my mother-in-law, she imparted so much wisdom. She taught me how to be graceful, you know? Um, so many different things, you know? Um, and so many different women in my life that I feel like God strategically placed in my life for different seasons. Um, but I still didn't know what was it to be a woman in Christ, you know, to exude that love, you know, to exude that joy, that patience, that peace, you know, the fruits of the spirit that the, the Bible speaks about, yeah. you know, and and then now I'm a wife, you know, you have all these titles that you start. But if you don't know your identity in Christ, like who you are as a daughter of a king, you know, our inheritance that we're no longer orphans. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand that, you will never be who you're supposed to be. One, you know, fulfill your purpose in the Lord. And two, to be a good wife, you know, a mother. Now I'm a mother of three boys, you know, so hope that. <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's um, and that's what people don't really get it. Right. They, they don't. When, when you allow yourself, first of all, you have to allow it, right? Mm -hmm. That's number one. And the second thing is you gotta recognize it, right? You recognize 
what is what is the issue here? Yeah. What do I gotta fix? Or you know what I mean? What are the things I can fix? Like, sh what is what can Jonathan fix? What can Cheyenne fix? And then what are the things that I can't fix that I need a higher power yeah. to do it? Which is the Lord. Yeah. We all know, right? That it's like we need something greater than than who we are that's gonna be able to intervene when we allow the Lord to kind of enter into these places that are kind of dark and people don't want to talk about them too much, you know what I mean? But there's a sense of, of, um, of I don't know, um, um, joy when you do kind of release it or you speak to it. And you touched on something that I wanted to get into next, to, uh, next was about community, right? That we think that we're in this alone. Right. Because that's maybe what we were taught. That's what we saw. That's your lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like you didn't want to follow in certain things, but then we end up following it. like as we get older unconsciously. Yeah. Um, and as children, we get affected by it. We don't know what's the severity of it until we get to a certain age where we're like, wait a second, like, wow, I'm seeing so many things. Did, did there ever come a moment in your life? where you were fighting with yourself, right? And you were like, not even fighting with yourself, but fighting with a person that you did not want to be, right? Hence your mom, right? But then you found yourself like kind of in those, in those places. Like how did you handle those moments where it was like, wow, I don't want to, you know, be this but constantly you have to either deal with or confront the person and deal with them. So how, how were you managing that? Or how did you used to manage it before, right? Compared to how you're dealing with things now uh, from the scars and all that stuff that you probably received. I want to say something because you said, you know, you, we isolate ourselves. And my pastor, shout out to my pastors. I love them. Um, Michelle and Mikey De Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, she says, isolation is false peace. And we isolate ourselves because we think that it will be pe more peaceful. You know, we don't got to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? And there's a time, yeah, sometimes we need isolation, right? right. But there's isolation in the Lord right. and there's isolation that comes from the enemy. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And he'll begin to bombard our mind and our thoughts and take over our mind. That's why we have to renew our mind, you know, in Christ. And... I, I, there was seasons where I did isolate myself, you know what I'm saying, that it didn't bring any type of peace in my life. Um, I feel like, you know, the, the seasons where, you know, if we could back up a little bit, you know, at a young age, I was molested, you know. And at the age of five, I feel like perversion really came into my life even more. Uh, for That's my first memory. Okay. At the age of five, uh, my mother and my father, they separated. And um, when they separated, my mother went to live with a friend. And she had a little boy probably around my age. And we start kissing and touching, yeah. you know what I mean, under the bed. And that's my first memory. And so now as we you know, grow, go, grow, and going through life and things happen, um, I didn't have the love of, fa of my father. You know, I didn't feel like I had that relationship with my dad. I don't know what the story is. You hear yeah. his side, her side, you know, and you kind of try to put the pieces together. Uh, but for a long time, I didn't feel like my father loved me. We, we got into, you know, an, an altercation one time, and he said something that marked me, that I was nothing. You know, and so I felt like for a long time, I was nothing. If my father didn't love me, then nobody will love me. Another man will never love me. Um, nobody will ever see my worth. I'm not worth nothing. Right. And, you know, I feel like those little series of events, you know, they were in my bloodline, perversion, incest, all these different things were in my bloodline, right? And we didn't grow up in a household that we were going to church and serving the Lord. You know, my, my, my mom's side of the family, they're Native American. I grew up in witchcraft. My grandfather used to make the uh, dream catchers and mandalas. He would wake up at three, four o'clock in the morning and that's what he would do and he would sell them. It was like a lot of darkness in that home. 
And I grew up a part of my life in that home. And so I have that and then I have my Puerto Rican side of the family. You know what I'm saying? And so from both sides of my family, there was a lot of things, a lot of generational things in the bloodline that needed to be cut. And so here I am now, you know, as I start to grow up, I start getting connected with the wrong people. I, I am living a life of perversion, um, you know, had multiple sexual partners. I contracted an STD at the age of 15. Don't know how I got it. it was incurable. They said I would live with it for the rest of my life. Glory to God. He healed me, you know, but so here I am going down this path in life. You know what I'm saying? That I never wanted, you know, I, I began to prostitute at the age of, I think I was like 19 years old somebody selling me something like I'm about to come up and get rich and get money like but that's how the enemy comes in right. to deceive you to paint a picture of what it's gonna be like when in the interim it ended it made me worse off now I'm suicidal now I don't know my self-worth now I'm just jumping from man to man to man because I feel like that's the only thing I have that's the only thing I'm good at that's literally what the enemy made me feel like you're not good for nothing else. This is what you're good for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, but that's what I seen in, in my life as well. You know, um, I love my mother and I know that she did the best that she ki she could. And this right. is not to shade her yeah, or to, no. you know, condemn her or put her down. Um, but these were the patterns I seen throughout my life, yep. you know, going from man to man to man and using them for what she could get out of them. You know what I'm saying? What can I get from you? I'm going to play you before you play me. I, I, you know, I'm going to have the upper hand. So here I am now living a life doing the same things that she did. But then I came to a point, um, I believe it was around 2013, somewhere around there, if I'm doing the math correctly, where the Lord was already starting to pull on me. He would send uh, people, prophets, to give me messages, words of warning, you know, starting to knock. You know, the Bible says he comes, he knocks, you know, are we going to answer? And I wasn't ready. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to give up the life I was living. I still wanted to have fun. Then I started to reason, well, I won't go to the club, but I'll go to a restaurant that got a bar in it, you know? Um, I won't drink but I smoke, you know what I'm saying? But fornicating was my biggest, like, I guess vice, you could say. It was something that really had a hold on me for uh, even when I, you know, was like, all right, God, I'm gonna surrender. Um, you know, he used my pastors, my in-laws at the time, you know, my husband's parents, um, before that my husband was my husband, um, to minister to me and to speak to the deep things, you know? And that's when I was like, all right, I'm done. You know, like I, I gotta, but then I still struggled yeah. after that. Yeah. But I didn't understand it now the way I get it yeah. was I still, every Sunday, I would still go to the altar. I think I was at the altar <laughs> every Sunday, just like, Lord, like take this from me. Yeah. Like, I don't, I wanna stop fornicating. Yeah. I don't know how because I would fornicate and then I would feel convicted That's right. and disgusted. Mm -hmm. And that indicated, that was an indication to me, like the Holy Spirit is like, come on, come on, what you doing? Yep, yep. You know you shouldn't be doing this. But my flesh was so weak at that time. Why? Because I wasn't in my word. I feel like if I was in my word the way that I should have been, mm -hmm. um, then my, my spirit man would have been stronger to resist. Right. But I didn't understand that even at that time. But what I did understand was I need to be at this altar. I need to be at his feet. Yeah. I need to uh, be right here mm -hmm. and worship because this is the only way I know how to get out of this. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, I love the, the, the verse, I believe is in Philippians, the, where Paul says that when we accept Christ, right? we have salvation but he says you grow into your salvation so we we have that gift of salvation 
but every day we're growing into the salvation that is freely given to us we got to work it out and every day we're like that's why like you can be in church and struggle and be dealing with things that that you didn't think that you know that you probably thought you let go a long time ago but and then certain things happen and it just brings up it sparks up a, a memory or it triggers and things like this and and it's just we got to be willing to say like wow you know what it's okay if i got to be in the in the altar you know um every sunday then i'm going to do it i i want to be free because that's what you were chasing after one one thing that that i that i learned in my own walk too when when i was when when i started at you know gave, gave my life to christ at 19 years old just um someone told me why you why are you so focused on the sin that you keep committing right that literally did a I, i was something in my brain was 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 triggered they were like why you keep focusing on that god is not focusing on your sin he's focusing on redeeming you right so as long as you focus on him th- the less you're going to sin So once once that 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 I got that like light bulb I was like wait a second like because then you start focusing on the sin and the more sin you do the more you fall into it the more you feel nasty disgusted and you're like god but and the holy spirit is just like there's a war going on right spiritually and it's just like wow what's what the heck is going on here and then you get them come to a point where it's just like a light is switch and it's just like lord you you took it on the cross for me a long time ago not only for my present sins but for my future sins and my past sins and that's where we have to like kind of remind ourselves that's why like you said it's so important that we get into the word because i believe we should be praying in the word also um not just telling god a bunch of words telling him what his word says and reconfirming it showing god that we believe in his word and that what he said he was going to do and what he said he started in you that he's going to finish it. Yeah. And um and and that's so great you you bring that up because it's 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 mostly, you know, a lot of the times we we think that things are just going to resolve itself, but the Lord is looking for you to do something about it. You know what I mean? Like what do you want to do about this? Who are you going to speak to? Are you going to seek counsel with the right people? Good fellowship, good friendship. Thank God you had good, you know, team around you. Yeah. as you gave your life to to Christ, right? Because people come to Christ and amen, amen, there's a celebration in heaven, but what are we doing after for that person that now is going to really go through it, you know? That's just the beginning. <laughs> That's the beginning, you know? So seeing you now and it, it's just like wow, you you're doing a book, you're working on a book, you got some curriculums going on that that you're building like I'm super excited for you, you know, cuz I've seen the the things that you're posting and i'm like wow i remember the fear that you had of just trying to do something that believe it or not they they could have been triggers from from before the the lies of the enemy still trying to creep on you yeah. even till today the enemy doesn't stop you know what i'm saying he he keeps going and we just got to be attentive to how to put him in his tracks and be like you know what you used to fool me before you're not fooling me no more you know what i mean and now i see what you're doing and i'm like super excited because i like a lot of women are following you now. I see a lot of things you're doing with with women and and it's just like wow man, it's so amazing. Like so now in this stage of your life, right? You have Christ, you have your husband, you have the kids, you're juggling with all, you got your 9 to 5, you're working and all that stuff. You got some things that you want to prepare for yourself and build uh, uh ministry wise, right? Like what are your plans now um um in 2024? that you've identified certain things you've checked off certain things that you wanted to do you've defeated certain things right what do you what do you see for yourself like coming in the next like season you know what i mean of of, of your life now that that is looks like beautiful amen you know something that you said because we we took some pictures i think that was like maybe what 2021 maybe yeah, i know it was around covid pand- time yeah, there's definitely during pandemic and around then i was like all right i'm gonna start this youtube channel i'm yep. gonna start this one. and i didn't start it yeah. and this scripture is what set me free mm. it's it's in proverbs 29 25 and i share this all the time because i feel like this will help people 
the fear of human opinion disables trusting in God and it protects you from that. What does it mean to be disabled? To turn off, limit someone in their movement, mm. senses or activities, impair or limit, uh, limited by physical, mental, cognitive or developmental condition. And I was like, why am I giving man so much power that I don't want to speak because I am fearful of what people are going to think about me, what people will think about my past, what think people will think about the things. Well, if this person hears it and that person hears it, you know what? And then I was like, God, I am allowing fear of man to disable me from walking in all that you have declared over my life. Yeah. No more. Yeah. And once I read that, it was like the Holy Spirit, something just shifted in me. Um, I have, a, everyone has always said, you're bold. You know, I, I'm a little spicy, you know, I'm a, I'm really direct. I could be a little, um, uh, what's that word? Maybe a little, I don't know. I'm just very, you know, I, I if you know my heart and you know me, genuine, I love, genuine. you know, I love, I'm being genuine. I do not want anyone to perish. I want to see people thrive and succeed, you know, um, but I'm a little brash sometimes because I'm, I'm very straight to the point. I'm direct, you know, and, you know, sometimes I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me with that a little bit. But um, I know where I came from and I know that it's possible. And so sometimes I feel like we can't cater and cr uh, cradle, yeah. you know, people. We That's need to give, some people need it yep. straight and direct and to the point. And so I birthed out last September. It's called Bold, Boldly Overcoming Lies and Distractions. It is um, a course, but I believe uh, what the Lord has given me, it is a lifestyle you know, to overcome the lies of the enemy, to overcome the distractions that try to come our way. Um, and it's a four week course and it teaches women how to go through forgiveness and heal and forgive themselves and learn their identity in Christ. These were regimens and something that I had to learn to get to where I am today. If I didn't go through this process, I wouldn't be where I am today. And it doesn't, I've, I've learned um, over the past couple of months that it doesn't matter if you've been 20 years in Christ or you're new in Christ, women have taken the course and, and it has been fruitful in their life because sometimes we, we need a, a, a reset. Yep. First time we need, sometimes we need to go back to that first love Oh, I'm in a dry season. I'm not hearing from God. Well, maybe you need to switch something up. Yep. Maybe there's something hidden in your soul that needs to be revealed. Yeah. And that's what the course does. Okay. Um, and then soon I'll be launching something. Uh, I'm working on launching something else in the next couple of weeks that I'm really excited with nice. because this is community. Yeah. I was in a season where I didn't have community, yeah. where I didn't have the women and the sisterhood that I desired. Something changed where a lot of people that I once was connected to, I didn't have that. Yeah. And then I also isolated myself for a period of time because I felt like no one understood me. Yeah. I felt misunderstood. And so I'm trying, uh, the vision is to create a space where women can build and share their thoughts and share their heart yeah. and share, hey, I'm going through it financially. I don't have no diapers yeah. or we don't have no food. Right. And they can put it in this community that I'm building and be like, hey, yeah. I, you know what? This is going what's on. This is what's going on. Yeah. Can you lift me in prayer? You know, I, I'm in a deep depression right now. I'm dealing with anxiety. Let's war. Let's come together every week and pray and lift up sister so-and-so and believe that God is going to break something in her life. Mm -hmm. And that, that's my heart. I want to see people free because mm. freedom is your portion. Yes. Freedom is your portion. Amen to that. That's so powerful. That's so cool, man. I'm super excited for you, Cheyenne. Amen. Seriously. And I, Amen. And I'm, Glory to God. I'm blessed to, to have you as a friend. Same. You know what I'm saying? As family and stuff like that. Um, for all the ladies that are watching, all the women that, that are going to be watching this too, that, that, that they can also connect. I'm going to yeah. have all the information. Um, give me all the information, all the links, all that stuff like that. Um, and so we can share with everyone. 
people tune in, tap in uh, with Cheyenne and what she's doing. Um, because I know it's not just about you. You know, I know you definitely have a, um, um, a heart for, for the people, especially for the lost, especially women that, that are lost. Um, I want to end it with this because it's a line that I love from Andy Mino and, and it really like always hits me because there's a line in one of his songs. He says, I, now I have to be what I didn't have for me, right? And that's such a small little line there but if you really listen to it, he repeats it like in his chorus and he goes, now, now I have to have, now, now I got to be what I didn't have for me. And I'm like, damn, you're so right. Like he went through so much stuff. You went through so much stuff. I went through so much stuff. But you know what? Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes now we got to be that person that we didn't have for ourselves growing up. So we can't be selfish in that, in that sense that it's like, okay, yeah, oh, but you know, throw a pity party for myself. No, I didn't have it for me, so why should I be like that? No, man, like get, get out with this nonsense. You know what I mean? Like, like the love of Christ is for everyone. And if the love of Christ found you, then why not share it with everybody else? So I'm glad you're doing that and you're sharing it with the woman that, that, that you want to connect with and, and um, um, I think is needed. Stuff like this is, is needed. I'm working on something for men also that God talked to me about a while as well. So um, um, it's little things like that, that, that bring the body of Christ together. Um, so like I said, man, I'm, I'm super excited for you. Thank you for, for coming uh, uh, to a coffee break episode. I'm hoping that we could probably do it again in the, in the next couple of months and, and see how things are going. Um, maybe we can focus specifically on, on the curriculum and the, the next, you know, if you're gonna do a sneak peek of, of the, the next thing out there. But listen, this is another Coffee Break episode. Um, this is Cheyenne, Alicea, myself, Jonathan, and we're just excited to share a, a, an interview like this one. This was pretty heavy. Um, it has a lot of content in it, but I believe it's beneficial to everyone who's gonna watch it and see it. Make sure you share it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified on new videos just like this one. Like I told you, I'm going to continue to push out content on a weekly basis. Not only coffee breaks of my own, but great conversations just like this one. So people can be edified and, and see what the Lord is really doing in our lives, in their lives, and what he wants to do in your life as well. Um, shout out to Great Coffee and always giving us a nice great cup of coffee all the information is in the description of this video below so like every coffee break we'll see you in the next one god bless you